Hi, and welcome back. The Eddie Tone 6666 Pro came out with a firmware update recently. So I thought today I would show you how to run the update. So what you're going to want to do is go to the Anytone website and click on downloads. And then you want to find the AT6666 Pro firmware update. And you want to download the file for that. It's going to be a zip folder that should be in your downloads folder. Once you have everything downloaded and the folder open, you're going to see two PDFs. And one of them is going to be called Firmware Upgrade Instructions. And what that's going to have you do is it's going to have you launch a program, an executable file. It'll be a .exe, I believe. And it's going to be called OX Code Pro 3 Setup. And you want to make sure you're connected with your PC cable. So once you do that, um, we're ready to move on to the next step. All right. Now what we have to do is put the radio into upgrade mode. And to do that, we push the channel knob plus the emergency key when powering the radio on. So we have the emergency the channel, law, the channel button, and we turn it on. And we are now in boot mode. All right, according to the instructions, we want to click on duplex. And the baud rate of 115,200. Now we want to click on open file and we want to find the correct file here, which is in the main firmware. And this is the file right here. And then we click on that and we click on right and then we get the message right data to the walkie-talkie okay that's interesting but we want to go yes and it is writing to the radio not sure why it's calling it a walkie-talkie And write is completed. All right, we now want to upgrade the DSP firmware. And we want to do, we need to push the channel knob and memory key. So let's go to memory and turn the radio on and we are now in dsp boot and this time we're going to go into the dsp firmware and let's make sure we click the correct one Looking good. And we click on right. And then we click OK. And it's writing the new um, firmware for the, it's called the DSP firmware. And this one's actually taking a little longer. Uh, I could have recorded my screen, but I was a little impatient, so I'm just 
holding the camera up to the screen, so sorry if it's a little blurry. This one's actually taking a little longer than the main firmware, which is kind of interesting. So we're almost there. This is taking a couple minutes. I suppose I could have fast forwarded through this, but now that I'm talking, uh, we'll just wait until it updates. And right, complete, okay. Now if we go over to the radio, it's still in boot mode, so I imagine we'll have to shut it off. And back on again. And the radio is back to normal. And here's a list of the firmware changes that came with the update. And I believe there's nine of them. Add memory copy to VFO feature. Press band while memory mode to copy the frequency and settings to VFO. Stop the overriding of saved memory channels. Add transmit color menu items. Allow settings of a different LC backlit color in transmit mode. Oh, we'll have to go take a look at that. Add scan to the PF key selection list. Add CW transmit menu item. Add CWBKIN, not sure what that is. Oh, allow setting of the CW break and delay from 0 to 1,000 milliseconds. And add CW shift menu item. And also, there was another file you could download on the website, another folder that adds support for the PC alignment service mode software tool. And I would imagine that would be for technicians to align the radio if necessary. Um, I don't think I would go anywhere near that unless you knew what you were doing. And then the last one was add firmware version menu item. We'll take a look at that one also. That allows you to see which firmware you're running on your radio. All right, so let's look at a couple of the changes, the firmware upgrade, what it changed in the radio. And two of them I wanted to show you really quick is, if we go on to the menus, uh, number, you now, number 19 has changed. I think 19 was dual screen before, but now in 19, what you can do is change the transmit color. So this is my normal screen. When I transmit, you can change the colors. I'm gonna leave it, I'm, I'm gonna put it at red. So let's let it exit out. When you key the mic here, when you transmit. Oops, we're on CW. When you push the push the talk button. The transmit is now red. And the other change I was going to show you really quick. I think it's around 40 on the menu. Is it now shows you the version number of the firmware you're running. Like I said, I've only had this radio a week, but I'm pretty sure this is the first firmware update that this radio's had. So now um, what it's done since they've added the firmware, firmware update, when you go over to your manual now, it will show you the different menu options. And they're going to change. They're going to be off now. They're going to be different because of the update. So I'm imagining when they ship these radios out, um, the menu items 
the menu items are not going to match what's in the instruction manual. So on my next video, I'm going to go over all these functions and try to explain them a little bit more in better detail. So this is just, uh, I, I just wanted to do this quick video and show you how, how, to, how to run the firmware update on this radio. I actually uh, had no trouble doing it. It was pretty easy. You just go to the Anytone website, and like I said, you download the two packets, and then um, install the software installer, and just select the folder that the upgrade or the update files are on. So there you have it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.